How do you older children feel about you dating ladies that's about the same age? How do so so feel about you doing gold digger pranks? What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Damian Cryer, and I am back with another freaking video. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, blessed, and amazing day today. If you have not subscribed to the Cryer family, you already know what to do. The links will be in the description box down below to my other channels as well as my other platforms as well. Guys, I want to say first and foremost, welcome to the family, man. Come in a little bit closer. Welcome to the family, man. I appreciate you guys pulling up, uh, you know, showing me love, man. But I want to say this before I start off this video, man. Yes, as you guys can see by the title, this is my monthly Q&A. It's actually been a minute since I did a monthly Q&A, and this is an odd time of the month for me to do a Q&A, because I normally do it between the first and the seventh of each and every month, guys. But I want to say this before I start this video off. No matter what you do in life, don't let nobody stop you, bro. Keep going, keep going. It's a lot of content creators out here, a lot of smaller content creators out here that could have been extremely, extremely big on this platform, but they allowed one or two videos that they did to run them off the platform because of the comments and people saying things about how they look in the videos and how their videos were blurry and their quality looked at garbage. You know, you have to start somewhere. In the beginning, you're gonna make mistakes. And some of those people that I have seen and have came and went away would have actually had a really, really good opportunity on this platform. If this is what you wanna do, you don't let nobody stop you. Don't let nobody stop you from paying your light bill. Don't let nobody stop you from making that extra money that's gonna complement your other income that you have coming in. Don't let no one stop you because this is the biggest platform in the world and they have a lot of money. There's like, YouTube got a lot of money, bro. They have to give that money away or they gotta pay Uncle Sam that money at the end of the year in taxes. So all I'm saying is that it's enough art for everybody, man. Please don't let nobody detour, detour you from doing what you wanna do when it comes to this YouTube stuff, man. It's not that hard at all. I'm not saying it's the easiest thing in the world because it's hard for someone to pick a camera up and get used to talking to thousands of people on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, it's hard to do that because you wanna know what people's opinions are, but don't let their opinions of you run you away. I'm 54 years old, man. My kids helped me get this started in 2016. That's been, what, seven, eight years ago, man. And ever since, I grab a bull by the horns and I do this by myself. You know, I upload my content every single day, guys. I don't let the opinions of no one stop me. You know, and you shouldn't either because, you know, it's enough out here for everybody. So I want to just say that because somebody need to hear that, man. You know, really, um, we have a lot of potential in this world. A lot of people have a lot to offer this platform a lot of great things, but people are not offering that to us on this platform because they've been scared. They've been ran off and they won't never come back to it again. And I always told you guys, I'm subscribed to channels that you guys would not believe. I'm subscribed to people with 50 followers, 40 followers, 200 followers. Yes, I am because I support everyone. And when they drop a video, I will go under their video and I will leave a comment you know, to make them aware that some of us bigger YouTubers, we are watching y'all and we appreciate y'all content, man. So I wanna just say that, don't throw the towel in for these clowns, man. Let these people say what they're gonna say about y'all. Just remember, every time somebody drops a video about you talking negative, drop two or three videos, talking positive, doing some funny stuff, because it's a slap in the face every time. So anyway, guys, let's get into this video. Two days ago, I put an instant story up on my Instagram saying you guys want a monthly Q&A. Drop those questions in my DMs. A few people did, and I did something that I very rarely ever do. As a matter of fact, this was my first time ever doing it. So after 24 hours, that story disappeared. I went and I put a second post up, still up right now on Instagram. 
reminding people that if you want to participate in the monthly Q&A, don't forget to leave them comments in the DMs because whenever I do that and I drop the Q&A, I see a lot of comments saying I enjoyed the Q&A, but I missed the instant post. I didn't get a chance to participate. So I did it not once, but twice. So the people who didn't get a chance to participate would be able to participate. And guess what? Dropping that second community post, that instant story, it worked because I had like 12 or 13 people who was able to ask questions. So I definitely appreciate that, guys. After the video, you already know what to do, right? Anyway, first question of this Q&A. Do you think about Mia and would you ever get another baby with so-so, meaning another baby dog? And please let Soso know she is beautiful. Soso, you hear that? So we have not actually talked about getting another dog. We have not even mentioned anything about any pets as of now. Um, but do I think about Mia? I think about Mia all the time. She was a part of my life for over two years. She was a part of my overall family life for the better part of four years. So I definitely do miss Mia. And I don't know what the future holds. Um, I don't know what the future holds, but who knows? Maybe one day we will discuss getting another dog. I'm actually, as usual, I'm deleting the comments, guys, because I had to screenshot them. The next one. Have you and so-so have a date pit to get married? Wow, good question. I just then came out just swinging on. See, some of these questions, man, I'm gonna answer, but a lot of stuff that I'm not gonna answer, there's a time for that. There's a time for that for when me and Soso actually sit down and do our very, very, very first Q&A together. And I know that you guys are going to love it, but do we have a date picked out yet? No, not as of to date. I have other things I have to take care of that was more important, that was pretty serious. Um, but no, we are working on things, guys. We are definitely working on things. Next question. This is a question that's commonly asked on a Q&A. Someone asks, when are you going to see Damon and Bianca and the kids? I don't know if this helps or not, but I see them almost every single day. So that was an easy one. Someone asks, Will you start vlogging some vacation videos with so-so within the next few months? Yes, guys. Uh, we are actually already making plans. We are already talking about some things. Um, I told you guys, I think earlier this year, before I actually moved into this house, that, um, that um, we had a lot of great things coming for you guys this year. And you know me, I'm not going to tell the plan. <laughs> You know, um, you guys have to wait and see it. But yes, we do have some vacation things planned. And, you know, aside to planning vacations with SoSo, I'm also going to be planning vacations with my children as well. My younger children, guys. So thank you for that question. What was that? Oh, I was going to say something. Oh, yeah, I'll just leave that for another time. Someone asks, when did you propose? I proposed about two months ago, guys and she gladly accepted. Um, I did it actually while my son Darian was here. Darian, he knew about it. He was with me when I got the ring. When I purchased the ring, Darian was right beside me the whole time. And you know, he's 16, so he was like giggling and laughing. Like, you serious, dad? You really gonna do it, dad? I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. So it was about two months ago, guys. So um, I would say this is, uh, I think, June? Yes, it was definitely during the month of June, guys. So, the next question. By the way, there's like 18 questions, guys, so I'm kind of speeding this up because y'all know when I get to talking, I get to talking, and then my Q&As be 40, 50 minutes, and a lot of y'all ain't really trying to stick around for all that, you know what I'm saying? Some of y'all are, but some of y'all just not going to watch a 50, 40 minute video. Uh, someone asks, this is a good question. What's your favorite song or album by 50 Cent? It's your birthday. 
it's your birthday. We're going to party like it's your birthday. We're going to celebrate like it's your birthday. It's your, this song is old. Some of y'all were even bored, man. But that's like one of my favorite songs. It's like when a person's birthdays come around, no matter who birthday is, it could be like a kid's birthday that's one years old or a kid that's 12 years old. That's the first thing that's going to pop in your mind is that song, 50 Cent's It's Your Birthday. It's Your Birthday. Speaking of 50 Cent, man, I want to say, man, congrats to him, man. Big props to 50 Cent, man. Yo, 50 Cent is doing great things, guys. He's doing things in the community that's going to benefit people, that's going to bring jobs, guys. 50 Cent is doing his big his big man thing. I was going to say big boy thing. He's doing his big man thing, man. Like... Like, he took it from music to making movies to just bossing up, man. Now he's giving back to the community. He's doing a lot of great stuff, man. Breaking ground on a whole lot of new events that's going to benefit a lot of people, man. So I want to say, man, big ups to 50 Cent, man. You know, I'm not going to lie, bro. I didn't really rock with 50 Cent at first because, you know, I just thought that he wasn't a good actor. When it came to like the movies, I loved his music, but I didn't think he was a good actor when it came to, you know, music, uh, movies and stuff. But when I watched that episode of Power and I seen that, you know, he really got his acting skills up to par, man, I had a lot of respect for him, man. Now I like, I support that dude 100%, man. And what I really love about 50 Cent, man, that dude, man, every time I see a picture on Instagram, it's like people uploading pictures of them with 50. He ain't one of those stuck up celebrities that think he's too good. He actually hangs out with people, man. He actually be in the club. You can walk in the club in Houston and most likely run into 50 Cent. He gonna speak to you, show you love, speak to you, maybe buy you a drink. He's a really good, humble ass dude, bro. So, but yeah, but yeah, it's your birthday. That's one of my favorite songs right there. Next question. Somebody asks, will you ever bring Damon and Darian around each other? Huh? Yeah? I'm thinking that this is probably someone. Because a lot of people who follow me on Instagram, they follow me on Instagram for other reasons. But a lot of them probably haven't watched a lot of the recent YouTube videos. Uh, so, yeah, I don't have to bring Darian around Damon. Hey, when Darian's here, I hardly see him because he's Damon pulls up to pick his brother up. Him and Darren, they hang out together more than I do. But they think it's like, they love playing basketball, man. Like, Damon and Darren, even though Damon is, you know, in his young 30s, and Darren is in his young teens, to me, they're still kids. And when they get together, it's mostly like playing basketball and stuff like that. So, this is a really good question. This person asked me, how do you feel about relationships and i think that's why i kind of sped sped the questions up because i wanted to get to this is one of them that i wanted to get to guys so how do i feel about relationships to be honest with you you know and they had there's there's they had uh how do you feel about relationships question mark question mark they have two question marks to be honest with you man this is one of those relationships Talking about relationships is almost the next the next best thing to talking about politics. It's a never ending cycle. It's a never ending story. When you get in a relationship, I think relationships are wonderful, but relationships is something that you cannot get relaxed in. You can't get comfortable when you're in a relationship. I used to always think, you know, this is giving me a part. This give me giving you guys a part of me. I used to think that once you was in a relationship, once you were a person for a certain amount of time, you know, you can lack off from getting haircuts. You can lack off by trying to dress all, you know, nice all the time. You can lack off on, you know, buying flowers and stuff and et cetera and et cetera. But I realized, man, a relationship, it's a lot of work. You cannot lack off on the things that you were doing in the beginning that's why relationships change because you're no longer doing the things you did in the beginning relationships take a lot of work even at my age at 54 there's things that i still learn now if you ever asking me a question about trying to figure out a woman don't 
Men have been trying to do that since the beginning of time. You're never gonna figure a woman out. So don't ask nobody for advice about no female because females are different than men. We could be thinking that we're making all the right moves in a relationship, but we could also be making all the wrong moves. We could be going out trying to get her the best things in the world, and she don't even want that. She just wants regular stuff. She just wanna know that you're thinking about her. You know, relationships take a lot of work. It takes a lot of, you have to have a really, really strong, solid foundation. If you were married, now this is just my opinion. You guys in the comments can leave me your opinions. But I feel like when you're in a relationship, let's say for instance, if you're married, okay. If you are married and you're in a full-fledged marriage, you got the family thing going on, you're in a relationship, you shouldn't really be hanging around a bunch of single females, bro. Like, that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work because your single friends are gonna be trying to convince you of how great the single life is out there. But they definitely can't tell you why they don't have a man. But they can try to convince you of how good it is to be single. This guy bought me a drink. This guy got a nice car. It ain't yours, that's his. But you know there's one thing about single people. Single people, bro, they really not happy, man. And so, like, I feel like single people should hang out with single people. And that's why I feel like it hinders a lot on the people's relationship. Because a person that's married could easily be manipulated, mind fucked, into believing that what this single person is saying and doing is really great. When it really is not, they really lonely. They really torn down. They're lonely and they want to destroy what you have so you can be a part of them, a single crew. That may not always be true, but I do find it that in most instances, it is actually true. Relationships, if you marry, you need to be hanging out with married couples, doing married couple stuff. And when you marry, you're supposed to move like you're married. You're not supposed to move like you're single. You know, so how do I feel about relationships? Again, like I said, relationships, I can only compare it to politics. It's a never ending, you know, cycle. It's a never ending story because every relationship is different and it's unique in its own way. But that's just it's one thing that I can give on relationships. And if you're married, like, so say like you're in a long-term relationship and you're not actually married, but you in a long-term relationship. I still think that hanging out with a bunch of single people is going to hinder your relationship because you're hanging out with single people engaging and what single people are doing. See, single people can do stuff that people that's in a relationship should not be doing. If you're in a relationship, you shouldn't be doing it. If you're in a relationship and you're doing single stuff, then you should be single. Don't hurt your partner. So that question right there, the person asks, how do you feel about relationships? You know, it's good, but it also sucks at the same time. Because in the beginning, it's gonna be beautiful. You're gonna be knocking the stars out the ceiling three, four, five times a day. But just know that when that honeymoon stage is over, that's when your faith is gonna be tested. That's when your loyalty is gonna be tested. That's when everything around you is gonna be tested. You know, and and when that time comes, when that honeymoon stage is over, you gotta, you know, tell yourself, is this what I really, really want? That's why you don't make moves too fast. Don't make moves too fast because the sex is good. Because you're going to fuck around and find out. You know? Um, but relationships is a lot of work, man. You got to put a lot of work in. You get into it, what you proud of it. That's like me. If I stop uploading videos right now for a whole entire year on a prior family, will I still make money? Oh my God. Hell yeah. For the first whole, maybe the first couple years, I'll still make plenty of good money a month without uploading any videos because of all the content that I have up. But eventually, if I don't put that work in, it's going to eventually start to die out. And it's like a relationship. You got to keep working on it. You got to keep adding to it. You know, you got to keep pouring into that cup, man. You know, but anyway, that was a really, really good question, guys. Thank you for asking me that question. Moving on to the next one. Another good question, guys. See, this is what I like about doing Q&As because I can tell when it's new people who's asking me the questions. 
because the question they're asking me is not about this topic or that topic. Basically the same thing that you hear over in Q and A's. People are asking different new stuff like, how do you feel about relationships? And this next question, someone asks, what made you want to start YouTube? And that's what a real Q and A is about. Stuff that people really want, need, and have to know. So my answer to that is what made me start YouTube? And I'm gonna tell you some stories, a story that I've never really, really, really talked about before. Um, but what made me really, really wanna start YouTube is after I seen how much money that you can actually generate, I actually had to see it with my own eyes. When I was in Indiana, this was way before I became single um, and got divorced and stuff. Uh, my son and his wife, they had channel DMV Nation. I remember them having an iPhone and they would use duct tape on the back of the iPhone and they would stick the iPhone to the wall. This is real story, guys. This is real. They would have duct tape stuck to the back of their iPhone and stick it to the wall. And they would actually do these videos, pranks or whatever. And I'm thinking, ah, you know, kids gonna be kids. So after several months went by, you know, I started seeing their growth. I started seeing how much money that they were making. And I also seen that they were working from home. They wasn't being told what to do. They became their own boss. And then the one day they pulled up to my crib, they both had their teeth done. I'm like, whoa, your teeth look different. I started seeing like the new cars. I started seeing that they were really making money on YouTube. And obviously, being that I'm a hardworking man, I've always been a hardworking man. That rubbed off on me to where I wanted to be a part of that world. I wanted to make my own money. So I was doing pretty good at the time. I was working at the steel mill full time. I was making a very, very great salary. I mean, a very great salary, guys. I got paid very well a week. I was bringing home between six and $900 every single week, guys. Now, some of you guys may not think that's a lot of money, but to me, six to $900 a week, you gotta keep in mind, I was an ex-felon. People told me I would never make it. I would never amount to nothing. But I work at a steel mill, and started bringing home six to nine hundred dollars a week and changed my life. So with the YouTube stuff being presented to me, hey, I was like, I could find a way to make a few hundred more dollars a month. Why not? That's light bill money, car payment, car insurance, you know, new tires and stuff like that on my vehicle. And it really worked. And so after they taught me, that's why you guys see this channel is called The Crowder Family. You guys hardly see my kids. You hardly see Damon and Bianca in my videos because I do my own thing. They taught me what I needed to know. And honestly, you guys didn't know, they actually bought me my very first MacBook. Right now to this day, I don't use that MacBook, but I still have that MacBook. It's in my office right now. They bought me, this was in 2017. They bought me my first MacBook. They bought me my first camera. Actually, no, he gave me one of his old cameras. The MacBook was still in the box brand new. I didn't know what the hell to do with it. But I started learning stuff and I started doing my own thing. And, you know, I, you know, I never got big like the Prince family or other big YouTubers. But I got big enough guys on here to where I was able to do my own thing. I'm able to write my own ticket. And so that's what really made me start doing YouTube. And I'm going to tell you right now to this day. I have no regrets whatsoever. Like, I have no regrets. I love what I do for a living. And now I no longer work a full-time job at the steel mill. But I still make, you know, I still make out very good every month. And, you know, it's not like, boom, where I would love to be at. But I'm a humble person. I'm very content to where I'm at. You know, I may not be where I want to be at, but I'm definitely content to where I'm at, man. So that's what made me start doing YouTube. And... Like I said, a lot of things that people say, they don't really understand that what they say is really not true. They say if it wasn't for the Prince family, Damon and Bianca, you wouldn't be who you are. If it wasn't for the Prince family, you would not do this and do that. Truth of the matter is, I give all credit to the Prince family. They actually gave me the computer. 
gave me my first camera, but I had to come up with my own content. And ever since 2017, 2016, when I started this platform, I've been doing it literally by myself ever since, you know. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's a great feeling because I'm able to do my own content. Now, will you guys see them from time to time pop up in a video? You guys see them right now. If you go back a few videos, every once in a while we pop up, we show up and show out. And so it's a great feeling, man. But yeah, that's what made me start YouTube. I was inspired by my kids. They showed me a better. First of all, my son, he was always scared for me. Like before they even blew up on YouTube, I was working in the steel mill. Damon called me every day on my lunch break. And he used to always be scared and terrified of me being in that steel mill because he can hear the cranes in the background. He can hear the, the loud noise. He's like, Dad, I'd be so scared when you be in that place. And so, you know, I was inspired by them. And like I said, I have no regrets whatsoever. Absolutely none. Someone asked, do you plan on continuing to live in Houston? Absolutely. Yeah, boy, ain't cool. I love Houston, man. I can't stand this freaking heat, man. Oh, I can't stand it. Today, it's 102 outside right now. Today is Wednesday, the 20th of August. You guys don't believe me? Look it up. Look up Houston weather. It's 102 right now. I'm not going out. Well, I'm going outside today because I'm going to get me something to eat. Uh, but I'm not going to be hanging out today. But no, I'm not. Uh, I do not plan on moving out of Houston. Next question. Have so, so met Dion and baby girl yet. How do you older children feel about you dating ladies that's about the same age? So for starters, no, Soso -so has not met my younger children yet, guys. And how does my children feel about me dating a younger lady that's around the same age? My kids love her to death. My kids love her to death. So I have seen multiple questions like that where people ask, you know, how do your kids feel about this and that? But this is not about my kids. This is about me and my happiness. That's what it's really about. Um, I don't know too many people who date people their age anymore. Um, I love what I do. She loves me. And we really don't care what nobody feel or think about it because we're not the only ones who has a relationship and there's an age gap there. We're not the only ones. It's been happening since the beginning of time. And so I think anybody who's been watching my videos since 2016, I wanna ask you this question right here. What am I doing now in 2024 that's so different than how I was dating back in 2016? What am I doing different? Nothing different at all. I'm happy. My children are very happy for me. The only thing that matters to my loved ones is that I'm happy. They respect me. They respect what I have going on. And that's that. So thank you for that question. Next one. This person had a couple of questions right here. So let's see here. This person says, Hi, Mr. Cryer. I hope I'm not too late. This is why I was happy I put that second instant post up because people were able to come back, you know, and actually comment. She said, number one, how do you stay so positive through the hard times? Every day I wake up, I'm a happy person. I go to bed happy. I stay away from BS. I try to stay out of drama. I mind my own business. Like I said, my videos, you guys see my videos. My videos are not about anyone else. You can click on someone's channel right now and all their videos is about other people. Not mine, I have my own content. I wake up happy every day. I treat people kindly. Um, I'm not a rude person, I'm not an evil person. Um, I'm not an angry person. Um, it's hard not to stay positive when you're 54 years old and you wake up every day healthy. I wake up every day healthy. I feel good when I wake up. My situation could be a lot worse at my age. You know, I have more to be happy about and positive about than I have to be sad about. 
Like that, you guys have no idea how good it feels, man. I have so much more to wake up and be happy about and stay positive. I barely even have a lot of negative stuff going on. I don't even have negative thoughts going through my mind. Like, I can't begin to express how relaxed I am. I'm so comfortable and so relaxed, guys, that I never thought that it would be possible. So, the next question that she asks, I'm sure the Prince family have met the little ones, but would you ever make a video of the whole family enjoying each other? Or is that something you would like to continue to keep private? We have did videos and we have did it. I just have not dropped them yet. Some things guys, we are going to continue to keep private. I don't think every time my son and his wife come around the kids, I need to pop a camera out because that's not being genuine. That's, they already said, I mean, not they, but some content creators on this platform seem to think I'm such a big clout chaser. Whenever I drop a video with me and my son or his wife, they all say the same thing. Oh, you're clout chasing. You can't clout chasing this. Something that's yours already. Like they're my kids. I can, so, but I think for right now, guys, there are some things that I still want to keep private. There are some things I'm not comfortable posting based off of things that happened in the past, man. Like, I'm moving so differently on this platform, man. Like, you give them nothing, they have nothing to talk about. But at the same time, if you show up, then they got something to talk about. They get a job, they get to make 10 or 20 bucks off you. But there's a lot of things that I still want to keep private. Um, a lot of stuff I'm really not ready to show, really. I have a lot of videos in the chamber, guys. A lot of great stuff. I just have not put it out there yet. So this person had a couple questions. The next question she asked was, how do so so feel about you doing gold digger pranks? I knew that question was coming. How do so so feel about you doing gold digger pranks? Well, I upload one every single day on Facebook. Sometimes I upload two or three a day on Facebook. So so supports me 100%. She believes in me. She believes in me 100%. She supports everything I do. As a matter of fact, sometimes if I'm not doing it, she's asking questions like, babe, why are you not? So she supports everything I do, guys. Um, she don't have a problem with what I do. And again, I don't really know how to, what else to say? She supports me. Like literally 100%, she supports me. So the last question that this person has was, at what age are you hoping to retire? Only asking because I know at some point you would like to just be able to relax and kick back. At this point, at this point, I'm gonna be honest. I actually really am retired. I mean, I have not drawn my pension. I can't draw it until I'm 62. But I felt like I am retired. The only difference between now and what I was doing in 2019 before I left the steel mill, I'm still working as if I was at the steel mill. I'm still putting that work in. Only thing is, is I'm doing it from home. So I consider that as being retired already. Um, I could have still been in that steel mill between now. Well, I'm sorry, between, I think I left the steel mill when I was 47. I'm 54 now. So I think between 19, 2019, I could still be there all the way until I'm 62. But I'm able to go ahead and just continue doing what I'm doing from home. And I feel like I'm already retired. When I turn 62, that just means that sweet spot kicked in. They got to cut that check every month. So I feel like I'm, I'm already retired. I'm really relaxed. I'm really honestly doing what I want to do. I mean, seriously. I'm doing what I want to do. Sometimes is it boring always being home, working from home? Heck yeah, it gets boring. But I always find stuff to keep myself busy. I don't have too many dog moments, man, to be honest with you. I honestly don't. I'm just keeping it real. I really don't have too many dog moments. Thank you for that question. This next one right here. <laughs> this person asks, if you could be president of the United States for a year, what 
would you do? I don't think I've ever in any of my Q&A histories been asked that question. And if I have, I apologize. I just don't remember right. Woo! If I could be president of the United States for a full year, what would I do? I think one of the first things I would do is I would give everybody a tax break, man. Everybody a humongous tax break. As a matter of fact, I was president of the United States for one year. Effective immediately my first day in office. I want everybody to stop having taxes taken out of their check. Because you guys know as well as I know, it's a freaking scam. It's a scam. That tax stuff is a freaking, listen, you work all, listen bro, you work all that overtime, all that overtime, you made almost a thousand dollars in overtime money and all you take home is like 300 bucks. They take it all from you, bro. I would get everybody a tax break immediately. The second thing I would do effective immediately all these homeless people on the street, man, and we send out all these billions and trillions of dollars to other countries for wars that has nothing to do with the United States. I would take these people off the street, man, and put them in homes, man. Maybe not new homes, but there is no way the United States of America, one of the most powerful countries in the world, should have homeless people out here, man. People who served our country, been in the military, sleeping under bridges and stuff, bro. That's a BS, man. But again, like I said earlier in this video, it was a question asked to me, how do I feel about relationships? I compared it to politics. I won't go too far into this because going into politics is too damn deep. It's a never ending cycle, a never ending story. There's never going to be a conclusion ever. But those are two things I would change. Tax. People stop paying taxes, have a taxes to got their check for a whole year and get some of these homeless people, if not all of them, off the freaking street, man. So good question. Moving on, we are almost at the bottom, guys. This one has two questions right here. Someone says, what happened to M and Bond? I'm not for sure what happened. Um, you know, um, I think everybody's still doing their thing. I think when it comes to M and Bond, the only thing I could say is maybe they're just keeping everything private. They've been doing social media longer than I have. Maybe they're just doing everything private and keeping people out their business. I'm not really for sure. Um, I'm still cool with the whole family, guys. I have no problem with any of them. So, not for sure if I was able to answer your question, but I personally can't tell you what I don't know. And I'm not the type of person that's going to make up anything. And an expert says, and why don't you do any pranks with the Prince family? Well, because I actually do my own pranks. Um, but I just, I don't do pranks with the Prince family because we really don't even do any videos together like that. Like he does, my son, he helped me out get on this platform in every turn. You know, I work my butt off to show my appreciation on this platform. If we do a prank one day, we will. It's not something that we got planned to do, though. Uh, I think for the most part, who knows? It may happen one day. We'll just have to see, guys. So the next one, person asks, when are you doing videos with Damien and me? Oh, sorry. When are you doing videos with Damon and Darren again. Not for sure, guys. Um, like I said, we don't have this, this kind of stuff. We don't have schedule, guys. We just we just do it, man. Like, if it happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. We just keep going. Uh, as you guys do know, I just started doing pranks again on the Cryer family. I think I did two pranks recently. By the way, thank you guys for all the love and support, too, uh, on those prank videos. It's something I've been scared to do, man. Nobody wants to do dang on pranks because YouTube is spooky. But who knows when we're going to do a video again. I'll just say, you know, you guys know Darren. He's only out of school for the summer months like most of you guys are. You you know, that that's your longest break that, that you get. And that's usually the time when Darren would come down here during the summer months. 
So I would say maybe around the summertime. Who knows? Darian may come down for the two weeks of Christmas break this year. We just don't know yet, guys. But when I know, you guys will know. Moving on. This next question is someone wanted well, to drink, guys. I'll get it dry. Someone said, my question is, I'm new to YouTube. Was it hard to get used to talking in front of the camera or walking around talking to a camera in public? Yes, it was. That was a very, very good question. Get used to the camera is one of the things that runs a lot of people off. It does. Getting used to the camera will run a lot of people off. Because people want it. People want it. People do want it. But in the beginning, guys, it is so freaking awkward. Could you imagine how awkward it was for me to upload my first video on YouTube? A fishing. I hardly even look at the camera. I just showed the fish and threw it back in the water. But imagine how much harder it is when you go out in public, vlogging in the public, knowing people are looking at you, walking around like this with a camera to your face. And they're looking at you, wondering if you got the camera pointed at them. And you walk in and you're trying to ignore eye contact. It's not easy, man. It's hard. But you can do it. You know how people practice dancing in the mirror? They practice certain stuff in the mirror, like looking at themselves, the type of faces they make. I used to do it growing up, looking at myself in the mirror, like how do I smile? How do I look if I smile too hard? Do the bad teeth really show? So all you gotta do is just practice. Practice at home, man. Now, as far as like how to gear yourself up to do a public video in public, just know people are gonna look at you. I don't care how seasoned you are at doing YouTube or vlogging, it's always gonna be awkward. The awkward part for me now is when I'm vlogging, people know I'm vlogging. They literally know I'm vlogging. They will come up to me while I'm vlogging. Hey, are you such and such? And it's like, yeah, yeah. They will still come up while I'm vlogging. So that's always kind of awkward, but I don't mind it. I just cut the camera and I chop it a little bit. But it's not easy, even right to this day. You know, I can still perform doing videos in the current stage that I'm doing them now at home than I would in public. But public is still getting used to, I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of getting used to vlogging outside because so many people be watching. And when I say they watching, people are literally watching to see what you got going on. So yes, it was really hard. It took a time, a lot of time for me to get used to it. And even though I'm used to it, doing it in the public, it's still, I still have like an awkward feeling from time to time when it comes to that. But if that's something that you want to do, just practice. Don't be scared. All you got to remember is when you do these vlogs in public, be yourself. That's it. I promise you, it's going to work. Thank you for that question. Next one. Oh, this is the last one. One, two, three. This is four. This comes from, is it four? Oh, three. This comes from NASCAR gang, guys. NASCAR gang pulled up. I'm glad that I put the second post up because NASCAR gang usually is a part of my Q&As. Um, so I'm glad I put the second one up. So she must have caught the second one. She had a couple. She says, number one, when is the wedding? Don't know yet. But that's just, I don't even know if we're going to make an announcement like that, guys. Like, I like to just do stuff when it happens. Like, so right now, as of to this day, there's not an actual date, guys. Number two, she asks, are you ready for the holidays? No, we're never ready for the holidays. Y'all know I'm a last person, I'm a last minute type person. I've always been a last minute type of person. Christmas, I'm, I'm that guy that you gonna see at the store. Listen, I have my Christmas tree put up right after Thanksgiving, just like every year. Ooh, I'm, I'm actually excited to put the tree up in my new house this year, guys. That's gonna be lit. But I will put my Christmas tree up around the end of November, right after Thanksgiving. Decorate it and everything. 
I mean, I'll be that dude in the store December 22nd, December 23rd, and December 24th for Christmas shopping. I'm never ready. I'm never ready. And then she also asked, what is the most exciting thing you did this summer? It actually was several things. There's so many I can't even talk about it. But I will say this though. Um, from a mental standpoint, one of the most exciting things I was able to do was to announce to you guys that I was in a relationship and that I had been in for a while because it's something I kept to myself. I just let people just talk, 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 think that they knew what I had going on. And it, it, it felt good to make that announcement. That was exciting for me. Um, and it, like spending time with my children, man, is more exciting to me than anything in the world. I look forward to the days that I see them, I get them. That's gonna always be exciting for me. Um, have I took any exotic trips this summer? No, I've been to Indiana multiple times this summer. So I haven't did anything like that, but I was able to go to the beach multiple times this summer. Um, yeah, guys, uh, so, but I really can't sit here and say that I did a lot of anything different as far as like going on exotic trips or vacation. But this was all definitely, definitely exciting summer for me. A lot of great things has happened. Also, my new home, I've been able to do some work in the yard that I haven't even showed you guys on camera yet. Something I've talked about in the past, but again, I'm the type of person I'd rather just show you guys because again, people be doing this right here all the time thinking that they know, assuming and don't know jack nothing. I just be showing people now. So I did a lot of great things, but most important, most exciting thing that I've done this summer is the stuff that I'm getting done to my house, guys. So that's gonna be the end of this Q&A. I was trying to keep this video kind of under 30 minutes, so I do apologize, man. Now remember what I said, guys, earlier at the beginning of this video, man, because this is so critical. You don't let nothing or no one stop you, man. You guys want this for yourselves. You, you want to get this bag. It's a lot of dire to get. Most importantly, to get it, you don't need nobody, guys. Remember what I said earlier? An iPhone, some duct tape stuck to a wall. You don't need nobody, man. Don't let nobody bring you off this platform. It may always seem like YouTube is so bad, it's so much drama. No, it's not. It's the channels that y'all watch. Makes y'all think that YouTube is drama. All you gotta do is zoom out, click off the channels. That's it. YouTube is still the best platform in this world. YouTube isn't boring. I heard people saying, oh, YouTube is so boring now. It's quite no, it's not. Just quit watching the stuff that you're used to watching. You're used to seeing the crazy stuff. So if you don't see that crazy stuff, it's not exciting to you. YouTube has a lot to offer, man. It does. So if this is what you really want to do and you want to become a full-time content creator, trust me, you don't need nobody to do it, man. Pick that camera up, bro. Start doing your videos, man. Don't worry about what they say in the comments because if they commenting, trust them, believe me. They only commenting because they're watching. How can they comment if they're not watching? So you already won. So I just want to leave you guys with that. Thanks for watching this video. I love you guys. Until next time, it's your boy Damien Cryer, and I am out. Peace.